Anybody that finds me a buyer for the Weibo today gets a thousand bucks cash when I sell it. So get out there. Let's do it. Find a buyer. You don't have a thousand bucks. I will when I sell that boat. <laughs> the Weibo is on dry land. This is actually the first time I've seen this boat in person since I've owned it on dry land. I have not had it hauled out. As I suspected, there's some stuff on the wheel and whatever else that will get off. Seeing this boat out of water, I like it even more. So this is the boat that I got from Barnegat Light, New Jersey. With the intent to use it as my crab boat, it's just too big. That boat there is kind of your average wooden crab boat. And this is Weibo. When McDonald's did the supersize me, Weibo is the supersized version of traditional dead rise. So she's missing a little paint on the stern here, which is not that big a deal. And that was from breaking up some of that ice. But the rest of the bottom is in immaculate shape for not being hauled out. It's got a little stuff in the bow because that gets a little more sunlight and that's what tends to grow a lot of this algae. But it's in good shape. All the transducers and everything well and intact. The keel cooler definitely needs cleaned off. It wasn't running hot. It was running at temperature and looks better than the bottom of the Southern Girl. So I don't know what kind of bottom paint they use, but I'd like to find out. You go down under here and see the rudder is covered in these giant barnacles. So you're losing a lot of speed, efficiency, and then the propeller has a lot of barnacles on it. And I was really hoping, honestly, that this is what was happening because I knew it was shaking. And that usually means you either have some line wrapped up around the wheel or your cutlass bearing which is the rubber carrier bearing in here is bad, but really everything else is in awesome shape. There's no cracks in the glass. The bottom looks immaculate. It's pretty much best case scenario so far under here, which I know is stupid to say. It's officially crabbing season now. It's April, but it doesn't feel like it. It's like 45 degrees and raining sideways. We have a very tight timeline these days. Do not have time to be dilly-dallying like I am right now. I have about a hundred other things to do. If I can get this knocked out here today and tomorrow, dude, I will be beyond relieved. It's on off stuff, which is just like basically muriatic acid. It's what I use to get like the scum lines off of all my boats. I've heard that this is like the same thing as Barnacle Buster, very similar. Yeah, it'll get rid of barnacles. I don't know how that works. Helps dissolve the barnacles. I'm gonna put it on the one side of the rudder and not on the other side and let it sit for a little while and see if it makes any difference. We gotta try for science. Or a little bit of, oh shoot, that didn't really work. Near the way I was hoping it might. It's a good way to waste like some super expensive stuff. I need like a paintbrush and That'll really work better. Probably did and probably took it out of my truck because I knew I would need it. Bubbling up the ground though. That's gnarly looking, look at that. Yeesh. So I remembered to bring the biggest scraper that I own for the smallest boat in my fleet. Could be a minute, although that ain't bad. Sometimes when it's got that brown mossy stuff, it keeps the barnacles wet and they actually come off a lot easier. Sort of satisfying for the first like 10 minutes. And then after that, it's, oh my gosh, they're still 39 more feet of this boat to go. This is the thing that's really gonna be kind of a pain. This is the keel cooler, which is basically the radiator. Yeah, so like in a car, you'll have a radiator where air is going over the radiator, cooling the coolant that's in the radiator to keep the car from, you know, overheating. Since boats don't tend to move fast enough or have enough consistent airflow, a lot of them have what's called a keel cooler. Instead of a bunch of little fins, you have a bunch of big corrugated tubes that coolant for the motor runs through. Oh, lovely. It runs it on the outside of the boat around the water that's around the boat, and that's what keeps the motor from overheating. When you have a bunch of barnacles growing in it, it's not ideal. Oh, this is yummy. Maybe I should hit this with a power washer first and knock off what I can and then go back with this. That would probably make a lot more sense. You said we did things because they made sense, right? Oh, gross. This board under here is called the worm board. And they put that on because, hell, watch barnacles, they'll cut you. Wash them out for sure. That's a good way to get infected. They put that board under here so that the worms eat that instead of this because they'll get into a boat. Not this one because it's glass. I'm not really sure why they have it, but whatever. And they'll sink a boat. Some kind of metaphor there where a worm this big could sink a 40 foot boat. I uh, wish you could smell it. That's satisfying. I could do that all day, but you gotta really be careful what you wish for with boats. This is going suspiciously well. I know I shouldn't ever say that, but it is. I'm sure something terrible will happen. It'll be very entertaining for you guys to watch. That's typically how this stuff goes. I never hope for anything bad to happen, but just by the nature of existing, things tend to. Watch, I'll go back and the on off, the acid will have eaten through the propeller. It'll look like Swiss cheese or something. This big thing here that's sticking you down, off the bottom of the boat, you may think, boy, that's not efficient whatsoever. And I would agree with you, but this is how you can tell how deep 
the water is under the boat. Um, this boat is called a color machine because it's so old. You call it a depth sounder, really. What that does is sends some frequency of sound wave, as far as I understand, down through this, and then it bounces off of whatever's beneath it and get a reading of how deep the water is. It's not really technically how deep the water is, it's how far away the bottom is from the bottom of your boat. Yeah, this one's, oh, gross. Really old, but it still works, so we keep her on there. But if you have barnacles on there, it's not gonna give you the best reading ever. It's gonna have a bunch of little pictures of barnacles. I do apologize to all the people that, I mean, I've probably provided a lot of things that you never need to know. But hey, you clicked on it. I don't know if you guys are anything like me, but I tend to bite off a lot more than I can chew. Underestimate how much work a project or something is going to be and then i get myself into a spot where i don't have an option but to make it work with very little help very little time very little knowledge of what i'm actually doing very little money and there's usually like five of those things going on all the time as we're filming this now it's crabbing season technically i could go out and start catching crabs but where i crab in the bay there's really no crab to catch which is why I'm not out crabbing right now. It's kind of buys me an extra month. Crabs are migratory critters and they're not everywhere all the time in enough numbers to be able to catch them and make a living. You know, you can go crabbing or you can go crabbing and make a living crabbing. I'm in the business of going crabbing and making a living. With the price of operation being higher than it ever has, it's very important that every time I leave the dock, I turn dollars. I mean, these days, no less than $1,000 worth of expenses if we're kind of running a skeleton crew between bait, fuel, and help. A lot of times we used to go out and put our pots out just to hold up spots. Then when the crab showed up, we had good spots. But these days, it costs so much money just to go crabbing that you can't afford to like not make anything. So if you go out and the crabs just aren't here, and you spend a thousand bucks to fish your whole rig and you catch $200 worth of crabs. You spend 800 bucks to go to work. We call that vacation. That's why a lot of guys around here don't go crabbing until later in the year. I mean, everybody used to set April 1st, but these days you can't afford to set April 1st. You gotta wait till there's actually something to catch. Any two things that you should wear safety glasses while doing. Number one is using a cutting wheel because those are super sketchy. And number two is power washing barnacles off the bottom of the boat. Those things are sharp and they just be flying doing friggin' Mach 10. Power washers are like my arch nemesis. I buy nice ones, I buy crappy ones, and they're all junk. This is the side without any of the on off, and this side does have the on off. You can see all the little bubbles. Now, I would be very surprised if barnacles that big came off with a power washer, but we're gonna try it. So we'll, we'll do the un on off side first and check it out, and then we'll, then we'll do this one. Got me nice and soaked. They're not coming off. That's gonna be easier to scrape, less dirty. This is the side with on off. Absolutely no difference, myth busted. Yeah, so I don't think the on off helps with uh, barnacles this bit, but it's also just been hearsay. I think the product works fine. Probably using it improperly, which sounds on brand to be honest. Granddaddy barnacles here, the breeding stock. Not looking forward to that job. That's a mess. What the heck was that? Sound like there's somebody in there. If I have a stowaway, I'm putting them to work. And one of the big bummers now is this marina is like 30 minutes from my house. If you take the key bridge, but since that's not an option anymore, it's like an hour without traffic. So whenever I get here and then inevitably forget like half the things I need, either an hour trip back or just make a list and take care of it the next time I'm up here, which is pretty much what I've been doing. It's not just right down the street anymore. So this boat draws about four foot of water. Four foot of water is not a problem if you're in the ocean. Four foot of water is indeed a problem. If you crab in the upper bay, <laughs> three foot. So a whole foot less, and that doesn't sound like a lot. That's where the crabs are at. And I'm in the business of catching crabs. So I'm hoping to wrap up getting the Weibo all painted and ready and zinced. So I've been trying to get a hold of this crab pot paint I ordered. This guy's been super, super cool when he lives in the area, so he knew the whole gig. You're good, you're good. Oh, here it is. 1800 pounds of barn paint that I'm gonna try to use as crab pot paint. We'll see if it works. We got the paint. It's literally hailing again. Now we gotta take the tunnel over to McCluskey's. I'm real uneasy about tunnels. You can still see the ship. That's where the key bridge was. That's the ship that hit it. I have Greg coming to help me today, help me paint, although it just started to rain again. I'm hoping we get some paint on this boat before it gets any worse. It's just killing me. You ever painted a boat before? Never. 
All right, uh, perfect. That'll work. Thing about in the rain actually is kind of sums up my life. It doesn't really make any sense, but it's got to be done. Greg is doing an impeccable job. Surgical precision right there. Did you go into school for engineering? Uh, physics. Physics? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's what I went to college for. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where did you go? School of hard knocks. I got my PhD. Yeah, great Actually, school. it is. <laughs> if they let a lot of people in, but they don't let a lot of people out. Some people spend their whole life there. I've had to go back and take a couple extra curricular classes, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, it's... I know what you mean. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, that's mint, man. Whoever buys this boat, they don't deserve that level of work, man. You ever used a grinder before? I've not. Okay, perfect. This is a very dangerous tool. It should only be used by trained professionals. Yeah. Naturally, I thought that you were the perfect fit to use this. <laughs> yeah, don't touch that. Super sketchy. Definitely wear glasses. Red trigger down, and then you yeah. click the glass. So right if it's something like sharp like that, and you get it under here, it'll rip this thing right out of your hands. All right. Here, have at it. <laughs> no better way to... Yeah. I don't have... God, I don't... There you do. Give it hell, buddy. Oh, God. It's normal and expected to be experiencing a certain amount of pain <laughs> pretty much all times. What were you saying about the edge then? Just if you like... catch the edge on that thing, it might rip it out of your hands, but you'll be fine. You got 10 fingers for a reason. <laughs> Just think about it like applying physics with real life consequences. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, you got the, the cord running through the water. And yeah, that's, that's fine. That's more physics right there. Yeah. Water conducts electricity, so it would only make sense to have the electrical cord in the water. As you can see, this is about the least ideal day to paint a boat because it's been like raining on and off. So now this is wet. I'm going to try to have to go up in there and stop the water. But usually you can kind of sit here and paint the bottom, but not today. The tide is just super, super high from the winds we've been having. Well, Greg's back there making Picasso look like a joke. I got to fix these spray rails. Keep water from riding all the way up the bow. It knocks it down here and kind of helps the boat plane out a little bit. Honestly, I don't even think they need to go all this far down. We got to move the straps down. Then I'm just going to take a chainsaw and figure it out. <laughs> Inspector Gadget over there on a jet ski. Keeping the water safe. That's right. That's what fixing things looks like oh, yeah. around here. <laughs> ah, there we go. Yeah, I was gonna ask you if you wanted me to do something with the one on the other side, but I heard you talking to the camera about what you were gonna do with it. Yeah, it's hard working with me because you never know if I'm talking to you or if I'm talking to the camera or if I'm just talking to myself. I've gotten a decent feel now of yeah. which one it is. <laughs> All right. This might be a very bad idea. That's how you open a tube of 5200. Look at that, the stuff's half cured already. People are definitely gonna give me hell about this, but all the holes are filled and then 5200 over. Work this down and paint it. If you think that this is not the proper way to do it, you definitely ain't no crabber. I've done this on plenty of fixes and it's been totally fine. How's it coming, Greg? Painting a boat in the rain? Oh, it's coming, Greg. Picasso can't even do this good. Dude, I ain't got nothing on you. Look at that. That's, what I'm saying. That's freaking skills, bro. Look at this, we're freaking knee deep in water. Getting rained on, it's like 40 degrees, painting in the rain. This is the other definition of in insanity. <laughs> Some like depression era stuff here, dude. We're hammering screws back straight so we can use them again. <laughs> Ow! So one of the, I guess, problems I've been having with selling this boat is one that I did not expect. I've put a boat like this on Facebook Marketplace and I have a lot of people that inquire about it. A lot of the people that show up and claim they want to buy the boat are actually a little more interested in just showing up and seeing the boat in person and saying hi and hanging out. I'm really glad that there's people that want to do that, but you know, I don't have a ton of time and I really would like to get the money back out of this boat so I can put it back into the business. So I need to come up with a solution. I've partnered with Tiki Lees, which is like a dock bar that's here local. We are having a Key Bridge Relief fundraiser, kind of like a big party with live music and everything. I'm also also going to bring Weibo and I'm inviting people out that may be interested in buying the boat. The money is going to the people that were directly affected that lost their family members and everything. I think they're donating like 15% of all the day's profits and they're doing 50% off for people, first responders and people that work for the highway administration. And so I have no idea if it's going to work or not, but we're going to give it a shot. Look, this is how watertight this boat is. It's so watertight that it retains every drop of rainwater, which is a lot over the past few days. So I'm using on off to clean the hull. Uh, it's turning green. So if anybody has any idea why hull cleaner is turning this green, let me know. I'd be very interested to know. It's also turning the 5200 tan, which is actually making this thing look way worse. Shoot, all this work I did to this boat and there was something I forgot to do. It's not too late though. 
much better. It has literally taken like three times longer than it should have to have this boat like painted, zinced, cleaned, and ready to go back in the water because this weather's been fighting me. Going to catch some lunch up at Jimmy's Famous Seafood with some buddies of mine, and then hopefully when we get back, they're gonna splash this boat. And I think I'm just gonna take it right over to Tiki Lee's and tie it up until Sunday for the event. Overall, I'd say she looks pretty good, honestly. She's a bruiser work boat, so she's not supposed to look like anything super nice. I mean, come on now, it ain't no yacht. It's for killing fish, killing crabs and oysters. She's all fixed up here on the bow. Look, you can't even tell anything ever happened there. Little fiberglass magic. Man, handsome vessel there, really. What do you guys think of my cat? This is the thing that I put together for my camping adventure, the trip to Florida. And my wife absolutely hates it. Everybody tells me that it makes my truck look like a piece of junk, which is kind of perfect because it's kind of a nice truck disguised perfectly as a piece of junk. Anyway, there's barbecue calling my name at Jimmy's. I might roll my boots back down. It's a classy establishment here. I love Jimmy's. It's like our home base for me and like my buddies and everything. Everybody are up around here. Jimmy's is where everybody meets and everything goes down. Getting splashed. Oh my God. And she's floating. Oh my God, just opened this box and that duck flew out of it. I thought that was like some kind of joke. I thought somebody was playing a joke, but the feathers. I don't know how that duck even got in there. We are off. Weebo's in the water, finally. We are headed over to Tiki Lee's. We're gonna tie the boat up here. The weather's been a little gloomy. This whole thing with the braids has been getting a lot of people down. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun for people to come together. My buddies are coming with me. So we're definitely gonna have a good time regardless. I think I may give my buddies a little incentive to try to help me move this boat. Well, on the bright side, her shake is totally gone and she's running smoother than she ever has. On the bad side, it's still not any faster. Well, it's faster than it was with the stuff on the prop, but it's still a slow, steady race here with the boat. Does have heat that works though, which is nice. There's what's left of the key bridge. Working away. It's funny because going from McCluskey's to Tiki Lee's is actually way further by boat. It's like an hour by boat. It would be about five minutes by car. One thing about Weibo, you can take it in any weather ever, and it throws the biggest weight I've ever seen a boat throw. That weight is like four feet high. Currently looking for uh, somebody with a cool stand-up jet ski to come sick tricks in the wake. Leave a comment, hit me up. Being back out here on the water makes me want to go crab and it's time. I wish there was a couple crabs around right now to go catch. We're here now. Hopefully the boat doesn't blow away. Hopefully all the water doesn't go out of here and the boat sit on its side by Sunday. We'll find out. We're gonna have a good time either way. Right, Nick? Yep. Heard it here first. Hopefully nobody disturbs the boat. I'll have to lock the door, I guess, since I'll be gone. Ready for Sunday. So it's about 6 a.m. on Sunday. We have a quick side quest here, going to check out the giant crane that they brought in with Don John Marine to clean up the Key Bridge. Apparently the biggest crane on the East Coast and the operator apparently watches me on TikTok and YouTube. I got in touch with him through Jimmy's Famous Seafood. They were delivering some food. Somehow my name got brought up. He sent me a video saying that they want me to come out and check out the crane. Give me a little bit of a tour. Eric is from Oregon. Yeah. Eric wants to talk to Luke McFadden. What do you do here? Crane operator. My man operates this big bad boy. I will get Tony to introduce you to Luke. How about that? All right, dude. All right, brother. The bridge is split up into like three sections to remove and Don John, the contractor I'm going to see, is responsible for removing, I believe, like the biggest piece that lays over top of the ship. It's also blocking the main channel entrance. I'm just hoping to get to get in here and meet these guys. I appreciate what they're doing. I want to bring them a couple of things I have for them. I'm just thank them for what they're doing. I just thought it'd be cool to get the perspective from these people that are actually making it happen. On the right here, that's the on-ramp for the key bridge. It's just so weird to see it not being used. <laughs> want to be able to bring you guys like as much of the up-to-date stuff on like the key bridge as I can because it is right here in my backyard. I guess until the new bridge is built, I know a lot of people, they just want to see the boots on the ground perspective they don't want to hear from the news so and I, which i totally understand so i wasn't able to really film or anything like that low key right now which is totally understandable i want to respect that man that is insane seeing that crane in person unquantifiably giant it, i think it's got like 265 foot of boom he said can lift a thousand tons he said they had to test it for overload yesterday so they lifted 1100 tons which is only a hundred tons more than its capacity. It seems like it's up to the job. Everybody there is super cool and these guys are working hard. They have been working seven 12 hour shifts a week 
since the bridge collapsed, nonstop in different shifts, different crews around the clock since the accident. Nothing easy about what these guys have to take on. I know everybody around here, all the locals appreciate them. I think those guys are actually gonna stop by the event at Tiki Lee's afterwards, take care of them guys, show them a good time down here in Maryland. They're from all over the country, from Oregon to New Jersey and everywhere in between. My friend Nick, I think is supposed to come over and pick us up and take us over to Tiki Lee's on his boat. I'm always nervous that nobody's gonna show up to anything. Uh, promoted events that 20 people show up to and I've promoted events that 300 people show up to, kinda out of nowhere. Anybody that finds me a buyer for the Weibo today gets a thousand bucks cash when I sell it, so get out there. Let's do it. Man. Find a buyer. You don't have a thousand bucks. I will when I sell that boat. <laughs> oh, dude, look at it. Dude, it's not, it's sitting on the bottom. Look at the sterns out of the water. We're here. It's early. There's a few people here. Dude, the Weebo's on the hard. It's pretty shallow here. My plan was to take the Weebo home and bring everybody home with me on mine so Nick doesn't have to run over again, but we're not taking it home like that. There's no water under that thing. Look at Riley, dude. He's taking, he's getting that thousand bucks, bro. He just wrote that on the back of my radar screen cover. And that's why I, I like this energy to hear, man. Riley's selling this boat today, I am promise. Cody ain't selling nothing. Although Cody's the luckiest dude I know. The amount of free cars Cody has gotten, stuff like that, he's the luckiest guy I know. I'm not gonna lie, my money's on Kyle, dude, the redhead. That guy, I've known him my whole life. He's a BSer. He can sell freaking ice to Eskimos. Look at him. He came with Nick, he's trying to sell him the boat. Riley, yo, I'm, a du I'm deducting. I know, I need to fix that. You can deduct the cost of this. Car. Yeah, I'm taking the price of that electric tape out. It's like a mile and a half in electric tape right there. If you win, dude, you're $999. That, that stuff's 99 cents or a dollar at a Harbor Freight. People will like that, that it's made from that. Yeah. That, that is pretty on brand. Could be yours. You could take it home, Bob. It, it, it won't fit in my yard. Bob, we'll make it fit in your yard. <laughs> it probably would. We'll make some room. I'll put it in there. I'll have it hold to your house, dude. I've got a 16 footer in it now. You're losing money not buying this boat, I'm telling you. <laughs> How you doing? Thanks, man. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, my kids love you. Oh, that's awesome. What's going on? I mean, well, we're doing a fundraiser here, you know, for the raise money for the bridge. I guess it's really for the families that, you know, lost people in the accident and everything. Really cool to meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you too. Your stuff. Well, I envy you, envy you guys. I'm 73. I've been through a cross bit blow in my hands. I hit a fell off a balcony drunk, hit a raised heart. I've been shot in the chest with a 357 Magnum and I've had yeah. stage four though. cancer. Hell Dang. The old bull. You're freaking defying logic, and I'd man. I love to do what you do, but I just don't think I got the juice. No more. You did all that stuff and you don't think you could have a boat like this? Come on now, you'd be all right. Big boat, 25K OBO. Find Luke, there you go. That's gonna sell it. You can't even read that though. I have the handwriting of a fifth grader. Watch, I'm gonna win the thousand dollars. She's good as sold, man, I'm telling you. It's a lot of boat there, buddy. It could be yours. Take it home with you. You don't tell him. It's like, it's tough as nails, and it weighs a, it's gotta weigh like 20 tons or something. I have no idea, but. Riley's trying to cut me off, but we're making all kinds of posts. Big boat, wee boat, look for it on the marketplace. We're gonna get this bird sold. Well, we're all here today because obviously the key bridge, hook you're on the water all the time. What was it like watching the community come together? It is awesome watching everybody be able to come together together for like, a common cause, you know. Take care of the people that need to be taken care of. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up, Luke McFadden, everybody. Awesome to see you, bro. Thank Thanks, you man. so much, man. Appreciate it, man. Oh, hey, can I say one yeah, thing? Yeah, one more thing, yeah. Hey, my boat's for sale. If anybody wants to buy it, let me know. None of my friends sold this boat, by the way. Did you sell the boat? Yeah, but it'll probably hit you up like next year or something. Did you sell the boat? Uh, yeah, I did. I sold the boat. They didn't sell nothing. And Kyle's at the bar. Like I said, perfect time to leave. The problem, four people came up back here to look at the boat today. If all this million followers went by. Yeah, 1.7 million people follow him, four people came here. I think it was a success. We had a lot of people show up. A lot more than I thought, honestly. My friends did not sell the boat, so none of them get a thousand bucks. Let's something the money through later. It's a win. Raise some money. We had a great time. I guess that's what matters, right?